after the show intro for episode 3, which is Una Noche Para Recorder, which is a night to remember, uh, as uh, Archangel the Venom taking on Superfly as Archangel the Venom gets the win with the High Speed Mystica. I'm a big fan of Archangel. I'm a big fan of Archangel Divino, and I um, think that he's uh, he's the fucking man. Now, his in-ring performance-wise, definitely going to get outperformed. Definitely against like someone like Superfly, but probably a good bit of people on the roster. But I love the man to death, and uh, I think he's just crazy talented, crazy athletic as well. Like him, and obviously El Hilo Del Vikingo is definitely probably way better than Archangel Divino is right now. But those two are like crazy, crazy talented. And uh, really are the future of Lucha. They had the Laredo Kid. I throw Laredo Kid in there too. But Laredo, Laredo Kid's kind of like the complete package though. As far as the three. And I mean it's just kind of crazy how, how good everybody is in, in Mexico right now. Uh, but yeah, Archangel the Venom wins in the opener. Uh, I would have it actually be not too false straight. Even though it's only nine minutes. I would have had it one and one and one. With uh, Superfly getting the first fall. And then the Venom going two straight. Uh, if it was me, though. I wish that was a thing you could fix, but that's all right. We have a backstage promo with Selena De La Renta, as she has set up a human sacrifice for Mimuentes in preparation for Rey Mysterio Jr. as uh, their match is taking place on the next episode. So just a little warm-up match for Mimuentes. That's up next. That's Flyer from Poor Flyer gets sacrificed to the man of a thousand deaths as uh, he wins with the sharpshooter. As, uh, I kind of, uh, you know, probably would have just had him in the downward spiral. Probably been the sharpshooter the first fall, which it's not really fall to tap out. But then the second fall being the, uh, the downward spiral is the finish. Uh, maybe even just the spear is the first finish and then the second finish being the downward spiral. I probably wouldn't have done the sharpshooter if it was me. Uh, but it's actually not a bad match at all. Uh, Flyer, even though he's going to put as, like, the guy who's going to get killed, still does really well with a 63 Suffolk has an amount of selling show. I'm assuming that's from Mil Muertes' point of view. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's not trying to sell. It's a complete dominating affair in seven minutes. As uh, the graphic for the next week's, uh, or the next week, rather, the next episode, main event, Mil Muertes taking on Rey Mysterio Jr. Uh, finally, those two go one-on-one. -on -one. Should be quite exciting matchup. As, uh, man, that's going to be a big-time main event. That is for sure uh, with Mil Muertes. Rey Mysterio Jr., though, I mean, those two have, you know, since the first episode, have been in each other's business, and now they collide in that episode. Should be very, very fun to see how that main event plays out. I've got a 74, but the main event for uh, this episode, though, Dr. Wagner Jr. versus Blue Demon Jr., two men, no strangers to each other at all, two legendary figures in the... Uh, uh, and Lucha about the Japanese romance. <laughs> it just shows you where my mind is at all times. But, uh, and Lucha, I mean, you're talking about Blue Demon Jr. I mean, if you had to, like, rank, like, a top 10, top 5, Blue Demon Jr. is definitely in the top 5. And Dr. Wagner Jr. is probably just outside that top 5. I mean, just two, two legendary guys. And uh, that made events interesting, though, because obviously Blue Demon Jr., as far as skills-wise right now, obviously age is, is caught up to him as much as many uh, Luchador stars have. But uh, really, Dr. Wagner Jr. of the two is definitely the better in-ring performer. But Blue Devon Jr. definitely has the bigger, uh, you know, his force aura and, you know, main event caliber stuff that, that he, you know, Blue Demon, hell of a name. And, you know, speaking, you know, talking about some big shoes to fucking fill with the, the original Blue Demon, you know, that's uh, you know, crazy in itself that he's really carved out a legacy that's maybe even surpassed. Uh, the first Blue Demon, so that's crazy to think about. But that main event should be exciting as the uh, King Cuerno match. King Cuerno taking on Puma King as he's got his, uh, he's got a Puma as his first hunt as uh, he beats Puma King in 10 minutes. Two straight falls, the final fall being the Bridge and German suplex. I thought it'd be the, uh, wow, what the fuck was that called now? I, I think it was just the Cuerno driver, the little, uh, movie did in, uh, Lucha Underground, uh, you know, uh, Bridget German Suplex is fine, as a King Cuerno, though, killing it, I was a little nervous, obviously, El Hero De La Fantasma, you know, he was incredible for AAA, and really became, like, a top quality guy, obviously got signed up by NXT, you know, WWE, and it's now NXT now, but really, he was someone that I was like, man, this is a fucking star in the making, for, you know, for AAA, and I thought he was gonna be there for a while, obviously, you know, that happens sometimes with a lot of elite level, uh, Lucha guys, they end up going to the States, but 
man, you know, that's that's exciting to see how well he's, he did here in this match of the 73. Good stuff. Good stuff here in Arena Mexico for this episode. This episode's been really been a, a night to remember so far. As uh, we have a video promo backstage with Atlantis Jr. and Atlantis... Atlantis talking on La Sombra, saying, you can go after my son all you want, but we have unfinished business, and you've made that abundantly clear, targeting my son. Our paths will meet yet again, Sombra. Just remember that. I have going to, I have taken your mask, maybe I take your hair, maybe I take your career. Who knows, I have been on the phone with Conan, trying to make this match happen, and he's given me his word that our match will will take place. It hasn't given me a date yet, but it's going to happen. I'm going to get my hands on you. I'm going to make you pay for what you did to my son. So that's just kind of you know, Atlantis being the, the father figure, even though, you know, obviously, Atlantis Jr., he could be able to defend himself. You know, he's a grown-ass man, but still, you know, just giving Atlantis and also, you know, playing up to maybe it's going to be hair versus mask, maybe career versus mask, or maybe career versus career even, you know. That's the type of... Uh, Whatever uh, the stipulation it may be. Because that's something we haven't really tapped into yet. Obviously in the first couple episodes I just wanted to really get all of the uh, matches. Uh, just kind of seeing where everybody was and whatnot before we started throwing out the stipulations. That are very custom to uh, Lucha Libre. You know the Masters hair or anything like that. Just any type of uh, bargaining match as uh, or I guess uh, a, g a gambling match rather if you will. But uh, yeah I mean as I see, you see that I just... I, Fucking misspelled Atlantis with the uh, dyslexia popping up big in that, this segment. So that's fun. As the uh, six-man tag is the next matchup. Uh, Zolos and Goldberg on Ablaze in action against uh, Limitless of Matt Seidel and Hedico and Jack Evans. As uh, Two straight falls. As the final fall being La Sombra pinning Matt Seidel with a Brilliante driver. Rush uh, bruises pectoral muscle. That's tough. Uh, was almost the best guy in the match. But, I mean, yeah... Limitless actually didn't do so hot. I was expecting Limitless to do a little bit better than this. Especially, it's been it's a high spots match, too. So, I figured that was definitely playing in the strengths of Jack Evans and Eriko and Matt Seidel. They still couldn't even get past the 60s. Uh, Jack Evans was really, really close, though, which makes sense. He's definitely the more over of the three. But, I mean, what a fun match, though, on paper. You got some six talented fucking guys in there. They go in about 12 minutes. And, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, Ilyas and Gobert are riding a wave of momentum. And, uh, you know, La Sombra and Rush. Uh, Dragon Lee, just barely outside the 70 mark, but really, as far as the trios go, they might be the best trios team out here. Uh, they are very, very talented. As uh, they are getting a, a nice win there. As I have with the Bruce Pectoro. The, uh, wow, I mean, this matchup here, I was hoping to do a little bit better, but a lack of psychology, which, no fucking shit comparing you know, with these two. But, I mean, talk about a absolute barn burner on paper. Young Bucks and Mexa Blood of Bandito Flamita. Is the Young Bucks getting the win? As, uh, yeah, of course it's going three falls. I'm glad it went three falls. As, uh, the Young Bucks do get the win after Matt Jackson pinned Flamita after the Meltzer driver. But yeah, this is a great tag match. Obviously, the tag division in Magnifico Lucha Libre. Even though, obviously, in its infancy. Three episodes in, but they're just on paper. We got a great tag division, you know, with the Bucks. We got Mexa Blood. They, you know, the Lucha Brothers. With uh, Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix. Even, you know, I would say Los Wagners of Dr. Wagner Jr. and Ejido de Wachter, uh, Dr. Wagner Jr. Uh, we haven't seen it yet, but like La Parca and Mimuetes, that's a great team. Even though they've only had the one-time matchup. I mean, that could be a team for the future. Uh, that could be really, really well. Uh, even Garza and uh, Carlo, you know, for Promociones uh, Dorado. I mean, that's a, a great little team, too. Uh, with also, you know, Ray Mysterio Jr. and Ray Horace. They haven't teamed up yet, but that's a great team. I wouldn't say him and Dominic, because Dominic isn't really at that level yet. But, uh, and, you know, even um, doing Ray Mysterio Jr. and Caristico, as far as, like, the ultimate kind of ace team. Uh, that's another great team, too. We got a lot. <laughs> we got a lot of great teams. So that's very exciting as a booker and as a fan of tag team wrestling, especially in Lucha. I mean, that's perfect, you know, with the two out of three falls. Really adds to another level, too of those matches, but yeah, I mean, what a great match to, uh, have as the co-main event, and then the main event, yeah, figured it would not do so hot, but it was still, you know, in 68, uh, or 66, rather, for Blue Demon Jr., Dr. Wagner Jr. getting the win, uh, obviously, with Blue Demon Jr. well into his 50s, uh, you know, he's, 
Uh, I'm not going to go past, you know, 10 minutes. So we put it right at 949. Uh, it was a three-fall series, which I, I think that's probably for the best, too. With Dr. Wagner Jr. getting the win with the set-out scoop slam driver. As the third and final fall to main event this Arena Mexico show. It's a big win, too, for Dr. Wagner Jr. As uh, post-match, though, Los Wagner's looking to beat up on Blue Demon Jr. Laying him out, laying out the legend. But out comes Cain Velasquez to make the save. And saving Blue Demon Jr., Megan uh, his debut in Arena Mexico, well not in Arena Mexico, rather Megan his debut in Magnifico Lucha Libre. Huge debut for Cain Velasquez. I mean that's a guy who is uh, has the obviously being Cain Velasquez and being a huge MMA fan. Like obviously who, who does you know Cain Velasquez is awesome, but uh, just as far as the potential in the lucha world, I think it's pretty uh, endless. I mean they're talking about a guy who when he actually you know made his debut. IRL, uh, that was quite uh, inspiring and jaw-driving. It's like, here's a guy who was an absolute killer. You figured he was going to wrestle kind of more of a uh, old style, uh, old school. It's kind of like a Conan or a Pedro Aguayo. was just kind of like more of a brawler. But he was fucking flying. He was flipping around. He was uh, really, uh, you could see how much of a big fan he was by doing a lot of lucha shit. Uh, that, was, that was really, really awesome. And I think this would be a fun... Tag match, too, in the future. Blue Demon Jr. and Cain Velasquez against uh, Los Wagners of Dr. Wagner Jr. El Hilo de Dr. Wagner Jr. Uh, that's a great way to end out the show. Uh, it actually lost pop, which uh, is tough. So, like, I felt like it was a really good show. Weirdly enough, the best match was uh, Volador Jr. and Sanson on the pre-show. Hadn't booked Volador Jr. yet. And I was like, well, we really need to get him on the show. And, man, he had, like, a 81, I think. He, you know, he's obviously I'm a big fan of Volador Jr. being a fan of both uh, Lucha Libre and Japanese for us. I mean, you've seen him in, in New Japan. Like, he's he's the man. And uh, he, he's definitely showed it there with his rating. So we'll have to get him more involved for sure as uh, going uh, forward. But really, as far as the show goes, like, obviously, Archangel the Venom Superfly should have flipped that with Aldo Jr. Santa. But we have plans for Archangel the Venom, so I had to throw him out there in the opener and uh, get in a big win against Superfly. Just felt like that was the, the better option there. Maybe we're doing a little bit too soon with Archangel in the venue. Maybe we should have kept on slow building it, but uh, you can't. It's too late now for that. Or we've already thrown them out there. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, as far as the show goes, I'm still happy about it. Uh, you know, we had a lot of good stuff. We just kind of got hurt by a. May, I wouldn't even say it was the opener that hurt us. We were just at the point where it's. We got to do a 75 or better at this point to not lose pop. Uh, but yeah, yeah, thank you all for watching so far. Uh, you know, it's going to be hard to really, obviously, dictate how everybody's feeling about this with this release of, of the series being, you know, a binge series of all 13 episodes coming at once. But I hope you all have been enjoying it, as I'm really not sure who to put over, to be honest. Uh, we'll, we'll put over Dr. Wagner Jr., and we'll put over Volador Jr. for the great effort. Uh, Dr. Wagner Jr. for... Having a good little segment in the main event with Blue Demon Jr. But yeah, uh, so far it's been really, really fun. And uh, hopefully this type of series, uh, we, you know, we can keep this going in the future. Obviously with Season 2, which uh, anyway, I got plans to at least do it till Season 3. And uh, so that should be exciting stuff in, on the horizon, that is for sure. I mean, Episode 4, we got the big main event. But also, at, from 5 to 8 episodes, Episodes 5 through 8 are going to be uh, very, very important as far as the significance of uh, Magnifico Lucha Libre. As we'll get into that as uh, after Episode 4. So you'll be seeing that. You'll be seeing, uh, well, not really after Episode 4, but you, throughout Episode 4, you'll be like, oh, shit, I see why that, those <laughs> episodes are going to be very significant. As uh, Yeah, we'll catch you guys for uh, Episode 